Well, thank you very much uh, for your patience. Uh, we had to wait, of course, to have the icing in the cake. And uh, we're going to have now a very informal and frank discussion uh, with His Excellency, uh, President Ruto. He told me to call him William, but mm. I cannot do that. Mm -hmm. We are formally here, so I have to call him Mr. President. <laughs> and uh, this is going to be a frank discussion. Uh, I must start by saying I'm a little bit disappointed because my wife, when she heard that I'm having conversation on stage with you, she went and bought me a very nice jacket. <laughs> and I said, I'm going to upstage him. <laughs> then he went and came in this, you know, wonderful. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> I mean, anyway, so it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, to, to, to really start, I, I have really three sets of questions. Mm. Uh, some of them are global. Maybe, uh, maybe before you start more, ah, let please. me... You just said I, I said I, uh, you should call me William, and you refused. Let me tell you of another incident. Yeah. I called the Secretary General of the UN, uh, Guterres. So I kept on telling him, oh, your excellency, you, uh, your excellency, and then he told me, please, you have to stop calling me your excellency. Call me Antonio. Otherwise, I will also begin to call you your majesty. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I stopped. So I call, nowadays call him Antonio. Yeah. Still, I'm going to call you Mr. Brazil. <laughs> It's not appropriate. We are in Kenya and we are in a formal meeting, and I believe it's live on TV. I think, so that doesn't. You should not be right. So I, I was just saying that we're gonna talk about some global issues. Uh, answer. As you know, most of our session today, or the whole conference, was about Africa and the world, our issue. And there were some wonderful speakers, amazing people, really. And I'm going to send you, I know you had other commitments, you could not, you wanted to come, but you couldn't. I'm going to send you the videos of these conversations because it's really good and useful. Uh, then we're going to talk about the region and then maybe a little bit about Kenya. Uh, so that's how we proceed, if you want. Now, you had been outspoken. You traveled and you make a statement about the global orders, about the debt, etc. Can you just... Tell us what is wrong with this architecture, the global architecture, we feel, especially the financial architecture. What's wrong? Why are you unhappy with it? Well, um, first, you must understand that uh, the current global financial system was set up against a certain context. Yeah. That context has since significantly changed. And therefore, it is struggling. The current financial system is struggling to respond to the challenges of the moment. Yeah. Countries, um, the, the whole system was set up around overseas development assistance, um, a financial system that was uh, focused on prescription from uh, the World Bank, IMF, and the institution. And sometimes those prescriptions went the wrong way. There wasn't room for emerging frontier, new ideas on how to finance development. And as a result, you find that the system has not responded to frontier uh, economies, emerging economies. A case, for example, mm. is what happened in Greece. Yeah. It tells you there is something fundamentally faulty with the current financial system. Uh, while it is true that you can get overseas development assistance at 0.5%, concessional uh, facilities at 0.5%, whatever, but when you, read, need, when you need real development resources, you have to go to the global financial market because 
you want to run your own development the way you know how, you end up with 10%, 12%, 15%, the and it becomes so impossible. Yeah. It becomes impossible to finance any meaningful development. Meaning that from the beginning, from where I sit, from the beginning, the current international financial architecture is, to put it bluntly, rigged against those of us in the global south because we cannot meaningfully I, I, address our development needs yeah. using the financial resources from this architecture. The, the, the message uh, from our panelists and eminent economists and uh, wonderful people here was very clear. This cannot work. The rich borrow very cheaply. The poor pay Incredible. I describe it as, you know, mafia type of rate <laughs> of interest. And uh, it's ridiculous how you do that. And uh, the rating agencies actually uh, who put us all as sub-investment grade and say, oh, because those guys are risky and fall, blah, blah, blah. They're actually engineering our failure. And just to say, oh, I told you, I told you. You know, those guys are risky. Uh, something has to be done there to be sorted out. People were complaining also about the speed of action. Uh, Whether it's Greece or Ukraine, money materialized somehow very quickly. Sri Lanka, Zambia, I mean, they have been in trouble for a long time. What is happening? Even this is the ours who made a big fuss about it. And it's very little, actually, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's still, it's still stuck in the system, what to do, what it, So, the, this whole system needs really to evolve, and we agree with you, and when you see the debates you had here, that's gonna reinforce uh, uh, your message. Beside the financial systems, you are holding, I was surprised actually, you are holding a... Uh, Climate. A climate summit here, oh, you said it, a yes. climate summit here in a few months' time, just a couple of months before COP. Let's be frank, you don't have trust in COP. Why, why are you having this just two months before COP? <laughs> because we tell Amina, look, Amina, we don't trust you guys. Where, where is Amina? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because save, you know, in the COP there are thousands, thousands of people go and then what happens? Then we find the Africans now to have their own summit and tell us your story. Why, why you want to have this summit? I don't want to put words in your mouth, please, so you don't get in trouble with that. Yeah. Mo, before I answer to the Climate uh, Action Summit, which yeah. is going to be between the 4th and the 6th of September, okay. I wouldn't go as far as you said mafia. I, I hope not. Go I that hope far. not. Yeah, you should. You are a president. I'm I not. Would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I would. I would say the following. I would say it is our responsibility. They say it is the wearer who knows where the shoe pinches. Yeah. So it is our responsibility to engineer the debate that will put on the table our perspective, our point of view on what kind of financial architecture, global financial architecture that would work, not just for us, but for everybody. everybody. Yeah. Because it is true that you cannot continue to have the kind of inequalities that are there in the world, because that is why you have all this migration left, right, and center, and you can never have peace until everybody has peace. Yeah. Therefore, unless and until we have a financial system that works for everybody, that financial system therefore does not work well. for nobody. Yeah. Right? So it, it, is, it is the debate we must have, it's the conversation we must have, and we're not asking for an unreasonable conversation. As I said here yesterday, we are asking for an even, a win-win, architecture that brings on board everybody and does not price others using risk 
or you know Africa is risky, or you know this is risky, or you know. In fact, we can authoritatively say Africa has the highest return of an investment. I don't know how that becomes risky. <laughs> Let me come back to your... The climate. <laughs> to climate. Why have the, <clears throat> this climate? To... We have, as a continent, as people from the global south, um, we have attended COP 26, 27, and the conversation has been a good conversation. We are focused on adaptation. We are um, focused on loss and damage and, and that conversation. From where I sit, that conversation is structured from somewhere. It is not a conversation that we have generated from this, from our, from our end. We also have ideas on how we can fix this global problem. And why we are having the Africa um, uh, Climate Action Summit in Kenya is because first I'm the chair of the um, uh, Africa's heads of state uh, on, on, on climate change. Okay. And therefore it gives me responsibility to, yeah. to, re, to work on Africa's position when we go to have a conversation with the rest of the globe. That's number one. But much more importantly, yes, it's good for us to have a conversation about loss and damage. Yes, it's good for us to have a conversation about adaptation. But we need to have the more important conversation about climate investment. How do we the, the real conversation is how to get to net zero. Yeah. That is the real conversation. Yeah. And investments on how to get to uh, net zero, how to uh, re-engineer the, the, the globe towards that direction. Investments that are being discussed is in the region of 150 trillion US dollars. The only, conversation, the, the only conversation that is being discussed about loss and damage is 100 billion. It is not a tenth. It is not 1%. So we are being consigned to a debate at the corner about loss and damage uh, adaptation. When the real conversation about investment is happening elsewhere. Why we are meeting in Nairobi on the 4th to the 6th of August is because we believe that it is no longer possible to continue to assume that Africa cannot develop and at the same time have resilient, climate resilient growth. Because for a long time, people thought, mm, maybe it is, it, is, it is not possible for us to have a conversation about development in Africa and at the same time to have a conversation about uh, climate resilient development. But science has proved using technology, it is actually possible today because of technology, we can actually have a candid conversation on how to leverage on the huge resources we have in renewable energy. There were people who, could, who, who thought that it is not possible to decarbonize our manufacturing or to green our industrialization using green energy because it was expensive to have panels. It was expensive to have wind uh, technology that could actually harness the huge resources we have in our continent to drive our development. But today, science and technology has proven that it is possible to unlock the huge potential of green energy in our continent, yes. not only to drive the greening of our manufacturing and industrialization in this continent, but in fact, the globe needs yep. the resources we have in this continent. If at all, we have to make serious steps in ensuring that we save the world from fossil fuels. Yeah, but you see, <laughs> wonderful. Uh, so, uh, yeah, do you understand why we are going to have this conversation <laughs> on the... <laughs> <laughs> More. Yes, it but, is very but, important uh, because yeah, not, we want yeah. the world to understand that we do not want to come to the table as victims. Oh, you know. Oh. 
that's, that's not what we want to do. We want to come, we have, we have our own ideas. We believe we can make a contribution towards sorting out this global challenge. It's affecting us the most. We have contributed the least, but that is not the conversation. We are telling the globe that we have ideas on how to sort out this problem. Yeah. And we want Africa to be part of the answer. We are not going to accept to continue to be labeled as victims. Good. But here is a, let me just be devil advocate. We have been talking about loss and damage and those guys pretended you don't hear us. You don't want to accept any liability. And I, to my understanding, I think it's only Denmark who accepted it. I mean, I'm incorrect to say <laughs> only Denmark accepted. Uh, and it was like a couple of millions, you know, just some small, you know. Uh, those guys refused to accept. Uh, here is another proposal, OK? You guys keep fighting the loss and damage. I don't believe those people will accept that discussion because they, they don't want to accept it. Here is another suggestion. Just look at what's happening now. In average, every American, man, woman, and child, puts out 16 tons of carbon every year. Europe does six, six and a half. China does six to seven tons per person every year. Here, we're putting nothing, very little. Mm. Some of us put half ton, some put one ton. South Africa is the only country in Africa which put something out, which is like six or seven, like, like Europe, or typically using a lot of coal. But that's an outlier uh, situation. 53 countries were not putting anything. How about this argument? The world today puts out 37 trillion tons every year. And scientists say, no, 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 no. You should be maximum at something 24 if you want to move towards net zero. If we accept that number, we are 8 billion people on the planet. And if we are all equal, and there is a question here, if our friends accept that we are all equal. But let's assume we are all equal. Then every man, woman, child in the world is entitled to three tons. Mm. How about this assumption? We say, OK, three tons is the limit. You guys put out in Europe six or seven tons per head. You need to pay into that trust the excess, three and a half ton per person, multiply by 450 million, multiply the price per ton, you put this money here. The polluters have to put that money there by international agreement. That is, that is the cost of you. You use something, you pay for it. And everybody understand that. You pay for what you use. Then a country which only emits one ton or two ton, we say, OK, wonderful. We owe you one ton per person. Here's the amount of money. We give you that money. And if we do something like that, enable us to deal with a number of issues, like the Amazon, like the Congo Basin. Everybody tell us, guys, don't touch this. We need it. You need it. Pay for it. Yeah? Because the whole world <laughs> pay for that. So we need to create that legal trust where money will be given to the guys who are not putting the carbon out and taken from the guys. That creates a market incentive. My point of view is that those guys taught us about the market. And they told us the market, the market, the market, the power of the market, etc. Even our Chinese friend, and who have a dear friend from China, today told us China may be a communist country, but it believes in the market. Correct? He said that. <laughs> OK, this is the market. Let the market force play out. The, the, the polluters pay because they are polluting right now. And now they have the incentive to stop polluting because they're paying a lot of money. And 
the developing countries, which is not putting anything, have good incentive to keep receiving money and to stay as good guys and go green. Why aren't we deploying the market forces and producing some kind of a global system where the polluters pay for, pay for what you use? And the guys who are going green receive compensation for that. If we look at that, the countries which are actually affected by climate change are all poor countries. And they are all non polluters Then they're going to receive a lot of money. Guys, go and build your resilience and go green, etc. That is a very simple thing. And then people don't treat payments as charity. I think the problem is the polluters. Uh, when they say, oh, we'll give you $100 billion, in their mind, it's a charity. You know, okay, I'm going to help you guys, you know, to, uh, you are victims. <laughs> but, you know, this year we have crisis here, we have COVID, we have that. I cannot do it. But if it becomes a legal agreement, it's something, it's not a charity. You pay for what you use. Would that be something we, 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 we Africans should advocate? We say, guys, just pay for what you're doing. And instead of thinking that you're giving us charity, it's not a charity. Anyway, something to think about. Uh, if, but what is important, I think, is to try in your summit to develop a coherent African voice. We need one coherent African voice. One, two, three, four. And instead of going with 54 very weak voices, hmm. okay, that's how to amplify. And I really look forward for that. Thank you. Uh, so that was uh, about uh, climate, and we talked about the rate financial system. Then, actually, the global order, or maybe you call it now glo global disorder, hmm. things are different now. And polarization, uh, the, you know, the, the, the things are changing around us. How Kenya is going to navigate now? when you have all these competing uh, powers and uh, a lot of antagonizing going on between these uh, powers. I imagine you are pulled this way and you are pulled that way and you pressure here, pressure. How are you going to navigate that to maintain the best path for Kenya? Well, I think let me, uh, you, you made a very powerful point. I don't know why you don't want me to respond to it because. Oh, no, 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 the, you're free to respond to anything. Is it, is Did it? I stop him responding? <laughs> I mean, you have because the mic. Because you yeah. have made a very powerful point well, about you. emitters and what, what do we do about this whole space where we're having a conversation and it's not quite coming out and it's, begin, it's looking like as you put it, it's charity. We're trying to help those guys. They are victims. You know, they are affected. That kind of conversation. And uh, I, I really wish what you're saying would happen because Kenya would be among the countries we would be receiving a big check yeah. because our greed is 92% green. So we, we, we would be looking at that opportunity. But because of the way things are, you know, and we have to be brutally realistic about what is it that we need to do. I think the first step, even be, before we go that far, is we need to do carbon pricing. Yes, absolutely. That's where we need Abs to do. Yeah, we need I, I, to start and what I'm there. suggesting is carbon pricing. Yes, we need yeah. to do carbon pricing. It, yeah. must be, it must be understood so that it is, it is empirical, it is scientific that this, uh, this amount of carbon amounts to this. Yeah. Step two, we need to work on carbon markets. That is all we're asking. We need to yeah. work on carbon markets. And these carbon markets must be worked on with integrity. Yeah. Today, we have carbon markets at 10%, at 10, 10 US dollars. We have carbon markets at 200. Uh, 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 200 US dollars, depending on who it is, yeah. on what you think it is, on, you know, it, yes. it's, it's, a, it's a floating. The you integrity know, of the you know, certificates. The, the, the integrity of the certificates is not guaranteed. We need to agree because we are in this together. Yeah. And I think that, that sooner we all realize 
that this is not us versus them, this is us on one side and existential threat on the other side, then we will put our act together. Once we work on carbon pricing, once we uh, uh, ensure that there is carbon, the, the carbon credits are, have integrity, yes. once we work on carbon markets, then we move to the next stage and we must countries, continents like ours that are sequestering uh, a lot of carbon, there must be a consideration, you know? Uh, I was uh, having a conversation with uh, President Museveni. He's a good old man. And we were having a conversation about what you do we said, do? Excuse me, you said good old, old man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to cause trouble, but I just... I, to... <laughs> I was having a conversation with yeah. him because he's my neighbor. I know. And yeah. I was in Uganda the other day. So we were having a conversation and he was telling me how he's working on making sure that he gets the oil out of, uh, out of the ground. He's yeah. working on a refinery. He's working on a pipeline. In the context of all these fossil fuel climate change debate, and I was asking him, yeah. how are we going to, you know, to, uh, to marry what we're doing, what climate change? And he was saying, and until, up and until somebody tells him why he cannot use his fossil fuels, and who is going to compensate him for not using his carbon fuel, while others have used theirs and developed their industries, then he will continue until somebody convinces him otherwise. I understand. And, if, and I, I, I find that, that, that conversation, you know, you, you cannot argue with him. Yeah. You know, Th those who are telling us don't exploit have developed beyond measure because of exploiting. And then, uh, Give me, so, uh, so uh, all, I'm, <laughs> all I'm trying to say more is we seriously must have this conversation. I have taken the decision in Kenya that we are not going to exploit. We have oil in Turkana. We have worked with uh, Talo oil. But we have said we will go, we will not go that direction. Because we want, we want, but you know, when we say we are not going, when we forego our resources, what do we get for it? You know, there must be a candid conversation. So what happens? So that it is not a conversation of, oh, you know, you guys, you cannot do this. You have to keep uh, the forest. You have to keep Lake Victoria. You have to invest in uh, the environment. And we are doing all this so that what happens? You know, this is the conversation uh, more that we need to have. No, I, I, I just and hopefully me. we will get down to the bottom of it and we will get a balanced uh, conversation so that we uh, get the benefit of the carbon sequestration that is going on because we are not emitters and we are not contributing to the emission. And I couldn't agree with you more. The principle, even in Kenya, is that emitters pay. And that's how it should be. Absolutely. And uh, I, was, I was smiling before because when you talked about the, uh, the, the carbon uh, market, because tomorrow we are launching an initiative here about the African carbon markets, and it's going to be led by two very competent people, uh, Dimolola. Is she here, Dimolola? Where is she? She gone to sleep. And, <laughs> and also, we, have, we brought uh, the man who designed the European mm. uh, market, carbon market. Okay. And we launching, because we need to find a way to really, uh, you know, produce acceptable uh, 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 qualification for our certificates because it is very low priced. And why we pay so much for uh, sequestering so much carbon here, but you pay double mm -hmm. or triple amount if you do it somewhere else. It's the same, same stuff, but it's the issue of, of the companies who produce these certificates to actually bring them on board also to, uh, to see how we can improve that. But that's also one step uh, uh, in that direction. I have some small ideas. Would you allow me to speak to them? Uh, maybe? Absolutely, they are at this bosom. Okay. Yeah? Uh, I, would, I would really value. Uh, Natalie, can you, where is Natalie? <laughs>
No, we act straight away. I mean, where, Natalie, where is Natalie? She's not going to sleep also. I mean, what wrong with those people? <laughs> she was here. Right. Can we uh, just arrange for uh, mm. uh, really communication? I mean, are you taking that into account? But I think the valid point here is a, a, a very interesting point here is how to produce a coherent African voice. This is our problem. Our voice is very faint and not there. In the Glasgow COP, 37 countries and institutions, or 39, decided, oh, we're not going to fund African gas. We're not going to fund. And following that, we were in a meeting in uh, the Africa Summit. I don't know, were you elected as time during the Africa Summit in uh, Brussels? Mm -hmm. The last Europe Africa Summit. And we had this conversation with our European friends and uh, Chancellor uh, uh, of Germany was sitting there. And I asked him, I said, you, 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 I found it very strange. You are wallowing in Russian gas. Half of African gas exported to Europe, actually. 50% of our gas exported to Europe. And then you say, we cannot use our own gas. We now have 600 million people without power. Where, where is that morally? How, how can you beat that, uh, you know? And that was six days before Ukraine invasion. Mm. When they say, oh my God, you know, I, I, now I, we I, have no gas, let's go to Africa now and, and get African gas. So all now investing in African gas because you need the gas. So we need some really consistency here. I will not use the word morality because you are here, I don't do mm -hmm. tough words, okay? <laughs> But we need some more. Uh, 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 here, Natalie, you're not, I thought you went to sleep. Uh, we need to, uh, the, the, the initiative on the African carbon market. The president is interested to link with that because also of his conference. So, uh, I don't Can you please uh, yes. sort it out? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, Right, uh, we'll move now a little bit from the uh, global issues because I think we don't have much time, maybe, I don't know, uh, to the region here. And if I look at the map, you are an island in a troubled neighborhood. Maybe Tanzania is good, is, is at least safe enough at the moment, and I hope to stay safe. but. You have soldiers in three countries around you. People trying peacekeepers to pacify things, etc. That may end up being four. If we send people to my country in Sudan, we're gonna need your soldiers, by the way, there sometime. <laughs> now, this is a tough situation for you because this neighborhood is not nice. Really, it's not nice. I mean, what's good? Well, I mean, of course, it's beautiful countries. But what's going on is not nice. Uh, do, does Kenya feel a little bit anxious? I mean, with all these things around you in border, do you feel a little bit insecure here as, as Kenyan, that with all these crazy guys around us, what's going to happen here? Well, it is true that we live in a tough neighborhood yeah. um, because we have a 1,000 kilometer border with uh, Somalia, which has not had a functional government for 40 years, 30, 30 something years. We have um, a border with uh, South Sudan. They have major challenges. Uh, we have uh, uh, in the neighborhood also in DRC, where wow. we have um, uh, our, our soldiers trying to uh, pacify yeah, the Eastern, Eastern, the Eastern uh, DRC. We take it as a responsibility because um, we know that our stability, our security is intricately um, intertwined yeah. with the stability of our region. Yeah. And um, uh, we, we believe using the uh, architecture that exists, whether it is East African community, IGAD, or indeed I was having a frank conversation with my brother Musafaki as the AU, that it is 
really time that as a continent, and, and, and uh, I, I shared my thoughts with uh, Musa Faki, that as a continent, we must take charge of our destiny. Yes. We must take charge of our security. 60 years after the formation of the Africa Union, we cannot continue to depend on Europe, the EU, the US, China, and I don't know which other place, to manage our own affairs. I think it is time. And that is why we took the decision in DRC. We didn't look for resources from, uh, I don't know which organization. We used Kenyan resources. Wagner, we, you heard about Wagner? You know, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, we are at uh, Uganda. We agreed that every country should deploy troops using their own resources yeah. because we need to take charge of our region. These are our issues. We need to deal with the security of our region because if we do not deal with the security of our region, we are foregoing opportunities of investment, of job creation, yes. of growing our economies, and we are basically working against ourselves. Without peace, there is no development. Absolutely. 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 So, but let even, me ask you a question. Let even ask... the situation in Sudan, we were having a conversation, I know it's your country, we <laughs> are having a conversation in Uganda day before yesterday. Yeah. And we were having the conversation on how IGAD, unfortunately the chairmanship of IGAD is currently in Sudan. So <laughs> it becomes very difficult because- uh, Here is Sudanese guy, make him chairman, yeah. <laughs> in absence of a legal government, yeah. I, we will volunteer in, in, this in guy. Fact, in fact, when, when, it was, when Sudan was given the chairmanship, it was because of Hamdok here, when it was a civilian government. But now we have a general. You know, so uh, that is our region. So we, we were having that con uh, a candid conversation because we believe it is our responsibility. Yeah. We were having a conversation with Musa yesterday yeah. because we believe as, as, as AU, we should sort out these problems. Let me ask you a question and it, here. And we have what it takes to sort out That's these problems. That's wonderful, but instead of one country bearing the brand, I mean, this is costly also. It is. Developing your uh, boys to go and do this, I mean, it's very costly. There was a proposal many years ago, and correct me if I'm wrong, our chairman. You guys decided to have a standing army for Africa. Mm. And that was many years ago. Where is that army? Why, why? That was a decision made. People said, look, we need, if there is, Terrorists they took place here, these guys took over this country. We need to have a ready standby force, which ready under the command of the African Union, and it will go and do it. And instead of sitting back, oh, France, come help, Britain, America, come help. Why those guys should come and help us? They should Why not. Should they, should, they should come and fight our wives? They should not come and help It's us. our own fights. And then we brag. We say we have half the world population in young people. Where are those young people? Mm. Go and fight your country, mm. you know? And uh, so uh, maybe we bring you the conversation. Uh, my brother Musa, tell us, where is your army? I, I think we should not disturb Musa. <laughs> Musa, I, I perfectly he's, understand. He's your friend. No, I, no, I, no, he's not. <laughs> he's, 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 uh, he perfectly understands. We have the wrong architecture in the management of the Africa Union. Yes. Yeah? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, okay, not me. Yeah. Musa Faki, who is the chair of our Africa Union Commission, can do very little because we have retained all the powers as heads of state. Right. And yet, you cannot run one country and run the continent of Africa. Right? We seriously need an interrogation of the management of the Africa Union. Today, we cannot even support Somalia. We are, we are waiting for EU to give us $85 million. $85 million. You know? We, we cannot fund it as EU. It is stupid. I mean, it, my brother. It is my, madness. My, so, yeah. so are you telling me 54 countries 
60 years after independence, they cannot manage 85 million to sort out Somalia, which has no government. <laughs> eh? let, let me, let me. I, I, I just want to ask him, uh, sorry, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> He's my brother, but we, 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 we need to talk frankly. How many African countries did not pay their dues <laughs> this year? <laughs> Please tell us. Don't name, but tell us how many. How many countries did not pay their contribution? The contribution huh? this year. I think the majority paid. Majority paid. This is the answer of diplomat. <laughs> yeah, let, that, let us not put Musa in trouble. No, so, no, no, but these are facts. It's not, it's not, I mean, I'm not naming countries. I'm saying African countries do not respect their own union. If you don't respect your own union, nobody respects you. Full stop. And then, the same guys who don't pay the contribution, they go to this international meeting and say, oh, African sovereignty, African solution for African problems, Africa this, Africa that. Come on, guys. What is this? Hmm. We need to be credible. If we believe we have an African union, we need to have an African voice, we need to do it. My understanding is you your operational budget, my brother, is really paid by the Afri by European Union. This is a fact. This is a public knowledge. It's not secret or whatever. We are, are not paying for our own operational budget for the African Union. We are not. And then we said, okay, we're going to have an standing army under the African Union. And we went and talked to European and that were big arguments about, oh, we don't give arms, we don't. Ukraine changed all that. Now, Europeans are willing to give arms if needed. And we say to them, instead of sending troops, come and arm this Africa standing force. That solve your problem, solve our problem, and you guys don't like Wagner. That's the way not to get Wagner. Our boys go and do the fight, <laughs> but we need the helicopters, we need let, let me say this more. Yeah. Let me say this to save uh, our faith. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that you yes, started this, not yes, me. Yes, <laughs> yes. We, we, have, we have a challenge. And uh, the positive thing is that there is a realization that it cannot continue this way. What are you going to do? How it to, cannot, how to it cannot, fix the African cannot, Union? It cannot continue this way. How are you going to fix it? Um, we have what it takes to fix it. And the conversation is already begun Again. on what do we realistically do to be able to get the African Union to take charge of the affairs of our continent. Let me give you a case, a yeah. case in point. We decided, for example, that we are going to assemble our uh, our market using the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Market yes, uh, that's uh, good ec ecosystem. Yeah. And the, the positive thing is that it was unbelievable at the rate at which we were able to achieve consensus and we were able to achieve ratification. And I want to tell you, it is among the things that happened in the shortest time possible. It tells you there is greater realization that unless we act in concert, unless we act together, we are unlikely to make any impact anywhere. How, so many, we, how many African we, presidents are on board? Uh, we, we have, at least on the market issue, we have put that together. There is a debate that is going to evolve. Like, for example, we have also decided that it will not going to be business as usual. We have these meetings, Africa, uh, US meeting, Africa, Europe, Africa, Turkey, Africa, India. Uh, now we are waiting for, there is another one, Africa, Russia. And Africa, Japan. And Africa, Japan. We have made the decision that it is not intelligent for 54 of us to go and uh, sit before one gentleman from another place. <laughs> and I mean, and, and sometimes we are, we are mistreated. Yeah. You know, we are loaded into buses, like school kids, you know? And, and it's not 
It's not right. Well, you are it's summoned, not, you know. It's not, it's, not, so? it's, not, it's not right. So the decision that we have made as AU is that going forward, if there is going to be a discussion between Africa and any other country, we are going to be represented by the chair, the outgoing chair, the income, the bureau. Let us. Let chair us of the commission and, and the chair. And and, uh, and and the chair of the RECs, and we have five RECs. That uh -huh. should be sufficient. Okay. For I mean, a meeting of uh, maybe six, seven, maybe six, seven. Yeah. That should be able to represent Africa, and that is the position I am taking as the president of Kenya. For any other meeting that we are going to have with all these uh, requests that we have uh, a meeting between Africa and one other country. We respect the sovereignty of others. I no. think to ask for, to be, for uh, reciprocation is not to ask for too much. No. And for us to agree that let us have this kind of uh, setup. The only, um, uh, because I had a conversation with President Kagame and he, he actually led that particular position. I have had a conversation with Prime Minister Abi. He believes very strongly that that should be the position mm. of, of our continent. Because, as you have said, if we, didn't, if we don't respect ourselves, nobody is going to respect us. And, and we should be able to take that kind of decision. Yeah. And part of that uh, respecting ourselves is when we say African problems, African solutions, we, we must be serious about the solutions. It cannot be rhetoric. It cannot be talk. It must be accompanied by what realistically and practically we are doing. And with our capacity, yeah. No, this is wonderful, but I, well, just one question. Why are you having this discussion in closed rooms? Why don't you bring civil society, all those people, in this discussion? Because we can also bit, put pressure on our leaders or whatever to behave in a better way. African people need to tell their presidents we care about Africa. That should be a priority. Unless we act really together, it doesn't work. And in the reform agenda of, of the African Union, if you, are, you and your colleagues are proceeding in that way, there need to be really a serious discussion about the structures and how Africa is... And, and, one problem is African countries refuse to cede any sovereignty to the African Union. So African Union cannot sign a trade agreement in behind of Africa. Then the African Union go and meet the European Union. This, this is not balanced. It is not. Because those guys had... 27 uh, countries, uh, 20... And gave them sovereignty. Yes. But our guys here don't want to give any sovereignty uh, cede to, to cede any sovereignty to the, to the Union, as if, you know, this is something very uh, fantastic they have to keep. When countries like Germany, like Sweden, big countries, agreed to cede ceremony, uh, sorry, sovereignty to the collective body because they are smart, they think when they are together, they negotiate better deals. Are you the saying? only stupid guys, unfortunately, are the British, who left that <laughs> collection. And, but look, I'm, I'm free to say that because I'm also a British citizen. And so I have my views about what's happening in Britain. I know we have British. Uh, ah, the high, Jane is there, the high commissioner. And, and the Archbishop. And I have the minister here also. <laughs> but do you agree with me it was a mistake to leave the European <laughs> Union? You agree? <laughs> You're going to lose your job, I think. <laughs> anyway, BBC is not here, don't worry. <laughs> Nobody watch Kenya TV, so don't worry. <laughs> anyway, so, so I, I, no, joke, I, I, it's not a joke. I mean, it is truth. I mean, it is, it is a mistake. Together, we're stronger. We, we do things better. And that's what we need the African people to press their governments. We need to be stronger. We need to have our union. We need to see some of our sovereignty for the African Union. I'm not, I'm not losing sovereignty because our collective sovereignty is huge. Is huge. Then we are somebody which can be respected around the world. We go out there in Europe, oh, we Africans, we Africans. I will ask you, what do you mean you are Africans? 
You are South African, you are Nigerian, you what, what do you mean you are Africans? Where is your government? With what decisions you are able to make? What, what is Africa? Hmm. Unless you have an African Union and a, a joint, a will, and, and then we, we, it doesn't work. So we, you made commitments now in front of all these people who are going to fight for that case. Is that correct? You have my commitment. And, 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 it not, and, and not just me, by ah. the way. I think a critical mass of African readers is building on what we, how we should act together. I told you, this particular position of consolidating what we need to do and how we need to engage with the rest of the world was actually driven by President Kagame. Excellent. We have, we have asked, we, we've talked with many other heads of state, and I think there is a critical mass emerging that we need to act differently, we need to work smart. Uh, let me tell you an unfortunate situation. I visited one of the countries, I don't want to say which one, <laughs> Uh, and we were having a conversation about the um, economic partnership agreement between ESC and the EU. Yeah. The EU, 27 countries, 520 million people have agreed on what we need to do. ESC, we have sizable 170 million people. Then uh, one country, and I don't want to say which one, told, uh, refused to sign. So he said, no, you know, we need to teach these people some lesson. So I'm listening. Your country has 11 million people. What are you going now to Now we teach? know the country. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what are you going to teach 520 million people who are supposed to serve as your market? Really? You know? So sometimes we undermine our own case yeah. because of not acting properly. So I want to promise you that uh, it is our challenge. The realization alone that we have a problem is halfway the solution from where I sit. So we, we know that we have to change stuff. We know that we have to act in, in a manner that makes sure that we secure our interests because the whole discussion, the whole discourse, is about interest. What is our interest? How do we protect our interests? Because everybody protects theirs. Yeah. So this is um, uh, awakening, and, and, uh, and I think the engagement of Africa with the rest of the globe is going to change. That is why, for example, we are having the Climate Action Summit, because we want to go to the UN. We want to come to the, the UN General Assembly. We want to go to COP28 with a, an African consolidated position, speaking with one voice, the whole lot of us, so that people can know we know what we want and we, we will not back this down. This is wonderful. If any value <laughs> to this discussion is, I think we reached some interesting commitment from the president here. <laughs> no, it's useful, the commitment made by the president. My only suggestion, is that mobilize the people, have trust in the people, because the pressure from the people can help reduce. Get the civil society into your summit. Get them to bless their governments to really to move behind you in this agenda, because that has to happen. And until you get the people behind you, everybody will drag their feet. And for that's the history of Africa. I agree with you 100% that we need to mobilize the people to to, to be with us, yeah. to share the, the vision with us, to agree with us on uh, the paradigm yeah. shift in what we need to do. Yeah. We need civil... I agree with you, the civil society have a big role to play, to play. Yeah. because uh, they, can, they can do sometimes what governments cannot do. Yeah. And, and even in Kenya, we have a robust uh, civil society. They have made a huge contribution to who we are today. Yeah. Sometimes as governments we agree with them, sometimes we don't agree with them, but that is the nature of life. Uh, all I ask of uh, our good friends in the civil society space, including you more, is always yes. to look out for the interests of the people of our continent, and not sometimes to play to the gallery of the people who pay your check.
<laughs> Watch out, I'm a little bit full. What you guys are loading for? <laughs> We're going to have a discussion here about civil society. <laughs> we had a session actually with non state actors here. Uh, we had the president of five or, uh, of the biggest foundation in the world. We're all on the scale. And I'm going to send you the video of that. Okay. What civil society or what foundations are doing for Africa? It's a wonderful job. And that brings me to the issue of civil society. about. Who pays your check? Uh, to, to start with, to start with, in our foundation. No, I, I, by the way, no, no, you know, we I, don't, I'm we don't, not talking about a more. No, but more you make it clear. <laughs> I don't know if nobody. We don't accept donation from anybody, government, business, anybody. Our money is the money we made in Africa from our investment in Africa, which was clean investment. And we gave this money, is an African money, to the foundation to do this. We refuse, by our constitution, we don't accept a penny from anybody. Because we work in the area of governance. So we don't have anything. Right. This brings me to the issue of other foundation, which doesn't have uh, a donor who have a lot of money to give them, which is fine, many foundations like that. Really to, to what bothers me is that if a foundation, not every country, but many African countries, if a foundation receives uh, funding from an external source, it is no, 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 no. Uh, some countries ask them to be registered as foreign agents. But the government of the same country go and beg for the same money from the mm -hmm. same donor. So how civil society is, is agent and a foreign agent and the president is not a foreign agent? <laughs> Let's be consistent. You know, why the government accept donation, but the people cannot, civil society cannot have donation? Mm. What we need, of course, we need is a charter for the uh, <coughs> foundations and we're working on, try, we need to have a charter for African foundations on our own governance, because we cannot just keep screaming about the governance and the government when we are not observing governance in our own foundations. We have to do, I accept that. And that should be, should be the way to work. And uh, I think we need to find, Kenya, they have- No, let, let me speak for Kenya. You guys are no, no, let me fighting this based on, 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 on civil society, frankly. Let, let, let me speak for Kenya. Yeah. The same way you have made a disclosure about more foundation. Yeah. Let me also make a disclosure about Kenya. This. We don't require the civil society to make any disclosures to government on who they get money from, how they use it. It is their business. All I said is we just, just the same thing. Governance, you demand of us governance, rightfully, legitimately, and that's the right thing to do. The same should be demanded of civil society the way you have said. I agree, but Mr. President, I think, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sorry about my ignorance. I hope you have a charity commission here, because charity needs to state an annual financial return exactly how much money they received, from where, where it went, how much paid their directors, how much paid their, that is a requirement, worldwide, everywhere. In America, in Britain, every, everywhere required. You need to implement that too. We have an NGO coordination council that takes care of all. You need to do that because that removes the fog and suspicion. Here, we are clean, we're doing the right job. I think that's uh, good for uh, both sides. But I heard complaint that there was some tightening of the space over the, you know, for <laughs> civil society of you. In Kenya? Yes. Is that true or not true? It is very untrue. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think the civil society must be somewhere in this room if there is any. Anybody uh, in civil society at, want at to challenge the statement? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, we'll guarantee your safety. Don't worry. <laughs>
Yeah. Uh, I heard. I heard you had uh, some rogue police unit here, uh, which carry some execution stuff. But I, I disbanded, disbanded on that. day one. So guys, don't be afraid. Mm. Stand up and speak. <laughs> Yeah. No, nobody's speaking. Anyway, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> you don't yeah. need any further evidence. No, that, that's fine. It's good, but I have to raise the question no, because no, somebody, good. you know, it's we didn't have a uh, proper conversation. It's good. Uh, one thing worries me about is the. <coughs> uh, I, I, yeah, don't don't uh, upset. Yeah, I don't want to upset you, or you know. So please allow me. You Kenyans are hot-headed. I mean, what is going on in the streets here? I mean, why don't you cool things down? What's going on? <laughs> Convoys for here and tear gas and this. And what, what is, you know, why don't you, you can see, I call you hot-headed. I call our people in Sudan stupid and criminals because we went too far. You look at our example and, you know, uh, cool, it, cool it down. I mean, you, you, why aren't you talking to each other? Mo, you see, <laughs> we, we have, um, we have a, a, a constitution that provides for how we conduct ourselves. We have institutions that make sure that everybody lives by the rules. And operates within the parameters of the law. We had an election, and it was observed by the international community. It was accepted. In fact, my predecessor said, I think a day ago, that he handed over to the gentleman who won. Yet his candidate, you know, the candidate he was supporting, is in the streets complaining that the election, he doesn't know what the, how the elections went. So if the chairman of Azimio, the former president, has told the country that he handed over to the gentleman who won, yet his candidate has a problem with who won the election, I think they need to have a small conversation between the chairman and his candidate to tell him, gentlemen, uh, I handed over to the young man who won, let us stop the demonstration. But that's not, that's not happening, but that's not the case. I did take the step, you know, as, a, as president, to deal with the situation, because they raised four issues. Issue number one, the high price of uh, food commodities. You know as much as I do, that that's not a Kenyan problem. But I said, okay, Let's have a conversation. They raised number two that they want they are, that they are not satisfied with the outcome of the election. They we all went to elections. The international observers were there. It was validated by the institutions of government, the institutions of the constitution. The Supreme Court validated. Five months after the election, they said, "Oh, we, there is a whistleblower who has now said uh, he has given different results." In which country, more, is elections determined by whistleblowers? I, I don't think there is any such country. But I took the step to say, OK, let us create a framework. I reached out to the opposition and said, let's have a framework where we can have a conversation about the issues you are raising. Right? And uh, I extended an olive branch. I, 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 I went on national television. I offered, say, let's have this conversation. They accepted uh, they, that uh, let's have this conversation. And uh, before the conversation could start, they said, no, we don't think you are sincere. You know, they, let's, we, they we want, don't like one of your members. They, did, they didn't like, you, you know, the paper. if you are having a conversation and, and you need everybody on the table, you cannot say, I don't like so and so. It is the reason why we are having a conversation because it's, we don't like one another, you know? <laughs> so, so it cannot be the argument that I don't like so and so. So the very reason why we are having the conversation is because we don't like one another. Let us always have the conversation. But anyway, that's, be that as it may, let us, let us see how else, you know, if, if you have a, make, a, make a different suggestion. We've even offered them, we've told them, okay, if you don't like so and so, it's fine. Can we start the conversation 
and then we will exit uh, this person you don't like. They say, no. We, are, they, we told them, but the prices of food commodities have come down. They say, even if you bring it down as, ma as far as possible, we still want to go to the demonstration. I don't so, know. Maybe, maybe uh, we need maybe a hug, Ferris, uh, you know. What? <laughs> really, because uh, more, my, my brother. More. My br Since these are your friends, why don't you reach out to them and have a conversation? <laughs> You are all my friends. <laughs> yes, yes, we are. You are my friend, <laughs> yes. and Uhuru is my friend, and Raila is my friend. We are, we, are all, we are all brothers. Correct. Okay? I already reached to our brother Raila, and I'm inviting him to come and have lunch. I said, I'm going to buy him a great lunch. Please. To come. I don't think we, we, I don't know where is he. I haven't got confirmation yet. <laughs> because I would like to meet him. Uhuru, uh, my other brother, unfortunately, he's changed his mobile number. <laughs> I, I, I cannot reach him. So if he hear us here, Uhuru, give me a call. Uh, yeah. No, because we need just to talk I, I will look brothers. for his new number and give you. You have his number? I will, I will get you it. You are friends then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, because I, I, to, to be honest, to be honest, and, and please forgive me, I, I'm not a Kenyan, but maybe it's much easier for me to say this because I'm not party to what's going on here. Please, guys. You have kids need education. You have people need food. You have jobs. You have a lot of issues important here. All this is hot air and squabbling. Let us work for Kenyan people. Absolutely. So just fairness, I'm, I'm, I'm not party to any of this, you know, but we, but we need to find a, a way to really hug and talk. That is, uh, I saw the Archbishop of Canterbury is here. Is he sitting here? You have a job here to do. I mean, <laughs> and, and he's the Archbishop, friend. that's your job. You need to go and get people, hug them, and you know, <laughs> make, do a prayer or something. I mean, come on. Yes. Is that reasonable request? <laughs> I don't understand, but I, I thought Christians also sort Christians people. <laughs> this is your flock, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> Well, I, I, I see you are running uh, and, and out actually, of time. Actually, yeah. one of uh, my competitors is actually an Anglican. So I think the Bishop of Canterbury can do a very good job there. When you come for lunch with us, <laughs> join us for lunch. Maybe you can, you know, start a conversation. <laughs> and, and you can start with a prayer. Anyway, we, we try. I mean, when we couldn't do it, then we hope God can do it for us, you know, but he's reluctant, you know, so. <laughs> What you do? Uh, I, I don't want to take too much of your time, but b before I go, it's just another personal question. I hope you don't mind. It's okay. More. My daughter the other day, uh, uh, you know, she told me, uh, "Do you mind if I call myself Ferris' daughter?" And I said, "What is Ferris' daughter?" She said, "Oh, you're going to meet President Ruto." I said, "Yes." She will ask him, what's your first daughter? What is this first daughter thing? <laughs> Do you have a first daughter? <laughs> I think, uh, Mo, you are harassing me. I'm not harassing you. <laughs> my, my <do> <laughs> this is not I, fair. I, I, I'm asking a simple, <laughs> a honest question. I know. I, yeah. I, I agree. Uh, maybe on this on this particular one. But, but uh, Mr. President, it is, this it country is, it is, had. It is, it is a Kenyan joke. Yeah. Because my innocent daughter Charlene put on her Twitter account, and I asked her, "Why have you put this person?" She says there are, I think, uh, what are those accounts that are duplicate, uh, parrot or something? I don't know. I'm not there, very. Yeah. There, there, there are so many accounts in her name ah. which she has nothing to do with. Oh, so oh I see. <laughs> fake accounts. Yeah. Okay. Fake accounts. 
So I told her, but you know, this will be uh, misinterpreted to mean uh, something else. But she says, that's how I have chosen to do it. And I, so, so I, I think let us just uh, leave that to be. So, okay. But uh, are you telling me that you have no intention of creating a third dynasty here? <laughs> I think it is, us... it is uh, I think the people of Kenya have moved on. And uh, my position is that uh, if you look at the way I, I, I look at how we should move, inclusive growth, inclusive uh, development, if you look at my political philosophy, I do not believe that everything should rotate around the president, even if that is William Ruto. Uh, members of my family are not participating in any politics. And, and I'm not saying that they should not, if they, they want to, but they should. Sure, but I, I have made the conscious decision that it is enough that the people of Kenya have given me the honor to be president. It is not in my place to use it to promote my family. It is in my place <laughs> to use it to promote the children of other people so that they get the same opportunity like the one I have gotten. And, 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 and that is why I have a very big argument with some of my competitors who use the office they get whenever there is a nomination. They nominate their daughters, nominate their uh, cousins, they nominate. I don't think that's the best to use, way to use opportunity. I think opportunity should be spread. If you have gotten an opportunity, reach out to somebody else to give them a lift, to give them a hand up so that they too can become something. It shouldn't be just around your family. Yeah, this, uh, uh, this is a wonderful statement and it is recorded. Yes, it is. Uh, eight years from now, we're going to play it back. Very good. Because many African presidents say good things at the beginning of their time and then change later on. But we believe you're going to stand. I don't know if I should say this or not, but one African president, who probably a friend of yours, 40 years ago, wrote a book and said the problem with this country is every president who wants to come here doesn't want to leave. Mm. He has not left for 40 years now. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to send him a copy yeah. of, of, of his the, book of with his, his ambassador. Book. He yeah. said, no, 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 don't give it to me. Yeah. He said, oh, he's going to fire you if you hand this over. But anyway, uh, so, but we have this statement here in front of everybody. There is no new dynasty. There is no junior, Ruto junior or first daughter, you know, stuff. Uh, I, hope, I don't mind, I have to ask this question. No, no, if no, I don't no. ask uh, more, yeah. please, you're free to ask me any okay. question. Uh, but, don't, uh, but I'm not harassing you, because I'm harassing you. <laughs> I'm not... With a light touch. <laughs> and I'm going to revenge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is serious. <laughs> really, you have been a wonderful, uh, uh, really, guest in our discussion, and we thank you very much, Mr. President. Please. Thank you. Thank you very you much. You are being wonderful. Thank you. Really? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I think you. we will love that. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much.